Aleluia. Aleluia. Oh, Jesus is good. Amen. He's alive and he's on the throne. And the good thing is he is here tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. This week I've been thinking just a little bit about these scriptures. And by the way, welcome to the uh, regional outpouring. Apostle Ryan's here tonight. Ryan Lestrange is going to be an awesome night in the Lord. If you need a miracle, you're going to get one of those. Amen. If you need salvation, salvation is here. If you need deliverance, we'll even cast the devil out of you. Amen. Hallelujah. If you need inner healing, whatever you need is here tonight. Amen. Jesus is here. Paul said in Philippians 3, 7, he said, but what things were gained to me? You know, he told all of the things that were good about him. Most of us tell the things that are bad about us. But he told all the things that were good about him and all the things that he had acquired in his life. And he said, but what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yet doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but rubbish that I may win Christ. And be found in Him. Wow, if you're looking for me, I'll be found in Him. Amen? Hallelujah. If I'm looking for you, where am I going to find you? I'm going to find you in Christ. Hallelujah. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know Him. Now, here's the great Apostle Paul, but he's saying, I just want to know Him, that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. And, not ending there, most of us want to move in the power of His resurrection, right? But it says, and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable to His death, if by any means I may attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of in Christ Jesus." Brothers, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, that was a little bit of a mouthful, but we're going to press forward. Amen. We're not going to look back, not only to the bad things, but even sometimes we can look back to the good things and get stuck in the good thing. So we don't want to get stuck in the good thing. Oh, I remember the move of God so many years ago. I remember the Jesus movement. I remember the, you know, this movement. I remember that good time in my life. But no, we're not going to look back to that. We're going to look forward. We're going to go forward into what God is doing right now. Amen. And the presence of God is here. He is alive. He is living. There is nothing that is too hard for him. He is the God of all flesh. Amen. So I want your expectancy level tonight to be high. Let's stand up on our feet and we're going to give glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ who was dead and yet he has risen from the dead and he is alive forevermore. Let's give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, we lift you up. We lift you up. Come on, let's lift our voices tonight. Let's not get quiet. Let's not be quiet. Oh, we're found in you, Lord. We're found in you, Lord. We're found in you, Lord. We hide away in you. We hide away in you, Jesus. Quiet in the waiting, I will remain in you. And when the storms all around me, and when my life seems tossed about, I will set my eyes on you. God, we set our eyes on you tonight. We set our eyes on you tonight. Focus, you are our focus. And in the quiet, in the waiting, I will remain in you. 
storms all around me and when my life seems tossed about I will send my eyes on you Walk with lions and do slay the giants that come between you and me. And you have taught me how to praise you in every season. You have taught me that everything I need is found in you. Everything we 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 need is found in you.
everything we need in this moment. Everything we need in this moment. It's rounded up. It's rounded up. It's rounded hell. Every sickness is healed in the presence of the Lord. Every bondage is broken in the presence of the Lord. Everything we need, everything we need. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. Faithful Lord, every promise you've made, you kept it. Every promise you made, you kept it. All you know to speak is truth. All you know to speak is truth. You are truth. You are life. You are faithful in all things. You are faithful in all things. I just hear the Lord right now say, I'm washing off weariness. I just sense tonight there's a washing of weariness as we've been singing. You are faithful. Lord, I want to stir up those promises. I want to stir up those words. I want to stir up those prophetic utterances that have been lying dormant. I want to remind you of my faithfulness. For many of you have been plowing. You've been praying. You've been pushing. But the enemy's coming with weariness. And the Lord says, there's an anointing for deliverance tonight from weariness. There's an anointing tonight for refreshing. The Lord said, there's revival coming in you tonight. Not just all of us, but individually. Father, we release your rivers of refreshing right now. We're going to break weariness in just a moment. And I want you to stir up the reminder of the faithfulness of the Lord right now. God's going to begin to move. He's faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. You are faithful. You are faithful. Every promise you've spoken, you won't back out. You won't back down. Come on, let's just stir up. Those rivers, stir up those rivers of refreshing. 
Tonight, the Lord is going to begin to refresh people. Chris, come here, my brother. Oh, Rabbi, Pastor Jason, Apostle T, come up. Robo Bosheke, Manzele Bosheke, Marebe Sikanda. The Lord would say, there will no be, there will not be any unfulfilled plans. The Lord would say, those visions, those things I put in your spirit, not just for Belize. I'm not just calling you to a nation. I've called you to a territory. I've called you to the Central American region. And I'm giving you the blueprints. Every word, every promise I've spoken over you. I'm going to be faithful in those promises, said the Lord. Lord, we just loose that break your mantle. Loose that break your mantle. Release strength. Oh, Release strength and vision. Oh, yeah. Open eyes. Open-eyed vision, open-eyed encounters, open-eyed vision, open-eyed encounters. I thank you, Father, for brand new God encounters, heaven encounters. We lose heaven encounters. We lose open-eyed vision. We lose angelic, uh, we lose angelic visitation to you in the name of Jesus. Angelic, angelic visitation. Heaven, 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 heaven visitation in the name of Jesus. I just hear the Lord say, there's divine downloads. And I was saying, Lord, what are you saying? He said, I'm putting things in your spirit that have not come out of the book written by man, but they're coming from the throne. There's a revelatory grace on you. And Lord, I'm going to show you things by way of revelation that are going to be trailblazing revelations for that territory and those regions and those nations. Father, I just say, open up that revelatory mantle. Loose revelation. Hallelujah. We say uncommon favor, uncommon fire, uncommon favor, uncommon fire. I thank you, Lord God. There's an open heaven wherever his foot treads. There's an open heaven. We thank you, Lord. There's a shifting mantle on him. God, that he will step in and things will shift. He will step in and transformation, transformation will come in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you're faithful. Come on, just worship them, guys. He's faithful. I, I, I just see somebody in here that you're... And I'm going to... If the Lord lets me, I'm going to preach a strong word later. But I see somebody in here that your Lord is calling you to push back a layer of religious spirits where you're at in worship. And you're, you're directly encountering... Remember this? Lucifer was the worship leader. Sometimes when you push into certain realms of worship, you're directly encountering certain spirits. And there's somebody that the Lord's calling you in your territory to pioneer a worship ministry that looks and sounds different from what's in your territory. And you're being hit by the ruling spirit in that territory. And I just feel like we're supposed to pray for you. Jason Armstrong, I don't know if you're in here, but come join us. But whoever that is, that God's using you in worship, but there's a battle in that territory. Come to the front. If it's more than one, that's fine as well. Whoever that is, the Lord's using you in worship, but but you're getting punched back. You're getting counter-punched. Shirabahaseketelabahasa. Come on, Annie. Come on,
the sound in the quiet place. You will banish the enemy with your secret song. Be faithful to the secret song. Be faithful to the secret song. unlock the sounds tonight we unlock the sounds in every region represented let the sounds arise let the sounds as Annie said in the secret place arise let the sound of worship let the rumbling let the decrees arise we govern with our praise we govern with our praise Shake the ground, sound that's gonna shake heaven. Praise the roar, raise the roar, raise the roar. Hey, this is a sound that has never been heard before. Yeah, come on, yeah, come on. This is a sound that has never been heard before. This was crafted in the quiet. This was crafted in the secret. This was crafted between the King of Kings and the people he has covenant with. This is a sound that's going to shake generations from here to come. This is a sound. This is a sound. This is a sound that has never been heard before. But it'll be what it's supposed to be. Come on, this is the sound for the front lines. 
This is the sound for the front line. This is the sound for the front line. Authenticity. 
With this sound comes authenticity. With this sound comes honesty. With this sound comes faithfulness. No more empty words. No more broken promises. We won't back out on you, Lord. No more empty words. No more broken promises. We won't back out on you, Lord. We're moving ahead. We're moving ahead. We're moving forward into what you call us into. We're moving ahead, we're moving ahead, we're moving forward into what you've called us into, we're moving ahead, we're moving ahead, we're moving forward into what you've called us into, we're moving ahead.
desperation, a sound birthed from desperation.
Come on, let's press in right now. Come on, let's press in. I just see the chains breaking right now by worship. Oh, the Lord's loosing people. He's loosing revelation. Some of you that don't know how to get where you're going. The Lord's loosing with the new song. He's loosing new insight. Oh, the Lord said, I made you to be a prophetic man of war. I made you to be a prophetic man of war. I see your shield being straight now. Every dead in place. And the Lord putting the sword of the Lord in your hand. The Lord said, I made you to see, to know by my spirit. You're not crazy. This is revelation from heaven. Shift tonight. Shift tonight. Shift tonight. Into your true identity. Enemy's been trying to rip your shield away. But the Lord said, I put that prophetic shield. I've given you a Shamar anointing. I've given you that prophetic watchman anointing. To watch and see what I'm saying. And to warn of the enemy's advancement. I place the sword in your hand. And a shield upon you. You shall see what I've called you to see. God, I just release right now. That prophetic mental anointing. And I release a restoration. Every place the enemy tried to dent his shield. Oh, we worship you. Come on. Just worship him. Yeah, restoration. That's it. Even those watching right now on web stream or on television, we release restoration. I believe there's going to be a tremendous healing man to release tonight. As we lift our hands and lift our voices and praise and worship, release the new sound. Come on, that healing flow is coming right now. That healing flow is coming right now. I just saw his hand and began to sing restoration. I saw restriction around the shoulders and neck area. And I saw the healing power of God flowing over that right now. Sarah and are we go are, are they live and making right now? So they're they're taking this web stream live and making Georgia right now. We just open up the wells of revival. In Macon, Georgia, we just say that every uh, uh, plugged up well will be unstopped right now. We just dig out those wells in Macon, Georgia. We just speak the destiny, that kingly anointing in that region. Open up. Even online right now, I speak over every person having pain across this upper back shoulder region. Lord releases you. I release you right now. I say be free. Anybody in this area that you're having tightness or pain through there, I want you to come to the front right now. I just saw the Lord opening that up and healing you. And the Lord was healing people by the sound. Saturday, I was in a room with a couple thousand people and we began to pray for miracles. We began to ask the Holy Spirit to come. There was a deaf girl over in the corner. The Lord opened her deaf ears as we just began to ask the Holy Spirit. As we said, Holy Spirit, come in all your glory and all your power. Healing is easy when the kingdom is moving. We release the kingdom over these bodies right now. Even those on television, online, we release the power of the kingdom. I command disease, infirmity, affliction, come out. We say be healed now. Yeah. Loose the kingdom. Restoration. 
chase the king now. right now the pain is leaving your jaw I just release the healing power of God someone's wrist has been healed the pain is leaving out of your wrist I command healing power I lose the kingdom now somebody's been having pain for months in your right leg from your hip on down the Lord says I'm healing it I speak the kingdom Father I thank you for the miracles of God there's a heavy glory in this room Somebody's breathing. Someone in this room, you're having breathing problems. It's like your lungs get tight. It's not just like a cold or something. It's like a tightness. I see that like a lock on your lungs. I see the Holy Spirit breaking that. Fire! 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 Ah! Command you to be healed. I break right now. This spirit of bondage, I break it. I break it. I break it. Every bit of bondage and restriction fall, fall, fall. You can't touch this daughter of Zion. The Lord puts a crown of identity on you. Oh, let's go deeper right now. Come, come here. Come, come here. Shut up. Our Lord said revelation is being unlocked in you. Revelation is being unlocked. I see writing. I see the Holy Spirit giving you things to write that you know not of. And they're going to say, where did these things come from? And you're going to say, I don't know. God gave it to me. And you would say to the Lord, but Lord, I don't think I can do it. And the Lord said, you can't do it, but the grace is coming upon you. To begin to decree and declare that which I'm downloading in your spirit. I see the Lord mantling you with supernatural vision in the spirit. That you're going to see things and know things by the spirit. But the Lord would say, this is a time of elevation. The Lord would say, this is a time of a narrowing road. And there have been those critical voices that have had, I even see like talons of a bird. And they're, they're locked into you. And you're trying to run in one direction. They're pulling you back in another direction. All the time releasing you from those voices that are trying to shut down the move of my spirit in you. Father, I thank you right now for the power. Be loosed right now. Be loosed right now. Be loosed right now. Whoa. Whoa. Fill her, Holy Ghost. Power. God hitting you. I saw some kind of a lock right here. I said, Lord, what is that? And I, I don't have the full understanding, but there's something that's misfiring that is causing some pain, some complication. And I just saw the smashing of that lock. And the Lord said, there's a healing anointing coming right there. Yeah, Lord, loose your power. Loose your power. 
I just see three people been having shooting pains down the lower back and hip. And I see the, the heavy, weighty glory of God coming on you. I believe those watching on television making right now the glory of the Lord. Somebody say, I never saw this before. There's somebody that's, that's flipping the channels. And you flipped on here. And you're involved with a drug addiction. And the devil's saying, you shouldn't even be watching this channel. But the Lord says, child, I knew you from the beginning. And I love you. And my power and my glory. You have a, a, a sweatshirt. It looks like a green, like a forest green color hoodie. And the Lord said, I love you from the very beginning. And Lord said, I've drawn you here. Father, release your love and release your deliverance. Send revival into that home. Send revival wherever they're watching. Send an awakening to them right now. Many that need to be healed, the Lord's going to heal you as you're watching. But also in this room, I see three that are having pain. Just come quickly down here in the lower back hip area. So it's been like a shooting. I saw a heavy glory hitting you. Here! Feel now! The Lord said, this is your season to run. There's an acceleration of the Spirit. It's not the season to walk. It's not the season to jog. It's the season to run. The Lord has mantled you with acceleration. I see an increase of wisdom, an increase even of administrative ability to carry the assignment for the hour. The Lord says, you would say, my God, I can't do it. I don't even have time in the day. And the Lord says, it's the season to run for you. Run! Run! Shake! I, 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 be healed now. The Lord is setting an alignment right now in your bones, Nebasa, even the small bones of your feet. I see that there were little hairline fractures over the years. Some of them you didn't even know about. But when the temperature changes, there's a little pressure points of pain in the feet. And Lord, so I'm recreating bone there. Lambrishabaha, anziklasta, olivrista bahaste, enchli klista bande, anglusukuba. I see out of your belly flowing divers tongues. The Lord said there's coming a deeper level. Risata of the diversities of tongues. Saka. I see the dam breaking. Oh, Lord, release your miracles. Lord, release your glory on any. Heavy glory. Healing power. Healing power. the Lord rejuvenating I don't know the medical terminology but in the shoulder I know there's parts besides bones and I just see the Lord rejuvenating some things there in the rotator cuff that's going to bring such an ease of movement and such a liberty in the Lord that the little aches and pains are not even going to be there the Lord said I'm just pouring out fresh oil there right now God I just release the oil of the Holy Spirit Pastor Jason, come here. Jason Armstrong, come. Just stand right there. Lord is pinning on you. Lord is pinning on you a star. And the Lord said, I'm giving you a realm of authority. Manji Kanabal said, come here, Apostle T. I'm giving you a realm of authority to begin to challenge the principalities and areas and territories. I'm giving you a realm of authority. I see just like a star like you put on a general or on a sheriff. And the Lord said, I'm giving you the territories. You're going to begin to function in a higher level of territorial authority and territorial anointing. You're even going to begin to see and sense the word of the Lord for territories. But you're not just going to know the word. You're going to have the authority to produce the manifest power on the word. I just see an increase in apostolic anointing and authority.
instant results, instant results, where you've said a thing and then you waited and you believed and you stood, but you're going to begin to decree a thing and then you're going to see it be established. You're going to say a thing and you're going to see it be established. You are going to be amazed at what God is going to do through your life, through your hands, but through your voice, through your voice. Through your voice, the authority of heaven is coming through your voice. Through your voice, that's coming to wait. Awaiting glory in your voice and your words will carry the authority of heaven in your voice. And as she was prophesying about your voice, I began to see a hand turning up the volume on a speaker set. And the Lord said, this is a time of amplification of your voice. I'm going to begin to speak to you, no longer just for rooms of people, but for territories and for regions. And I'm going to cause your voice to travel out into territories and regions, says the Lord. Think it not strange that this would be a time that your voice would be rising in authority, but your voice would be amplified and reverberate. I'm reminded of when there's an echo that goes out, something is said, and then it's echoed again and again and again. The Lord said that God's going to give you a single revelation, but it's going to have a ripple effect. It's going to be echoed again and again and again, and there's going to be a multiplication of the effectiveness of the voice of the Lord resonating through you. Father, we just release right now this amplification on all fronts, God. We just loose liberty right now. Even those watching, we loose liberty right now. Every bit of depression. You're at home or you're watching this, wherever you're watching it. And there's confusion in your mind. The same Jesus that heals bodies, heals minds. There's confusion. Somebody with an extended grieving, your heart broken. Put your hand on yourself wherever you're watching at. Just put your hand there on your head, on your heart. We break right now confusion and depression. We command you, go from the people of God. We break that grieving. I command the spirit of grief, come off. We loose the power of the Holy Ghost. This lady in the back, the power is all over you. Come here, man. Get her there and get her and bring her forth. Come here, the glory's on you. Lift your hands up. Just stand right there. I don't need to touch you. Fire! Lord, I'm baptizing you in renewal. Those old words, those old foundations 
There's new oil coming on them. Fire! 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 Lord, send a fire of fervent intercessions coming back to you. Fervent seeking. Fervent pressing. And the python that tried to choke the wind and the breath of your assignment is coming off, coming off, coming off, coming off. Shut up, Yalama. Oh, Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Oh, we loose your healing anointing, your glory. We loose your glory, Lord. Saw hundreds of people healed on Saturday. I believe people are going to be healed right now in this room and online and on television, however you're watching this. If you're in this room and you need a healing in your body, someone with sound confusion in one of your ears, the Lord is dealing with that right now. Somebody with pain in their jaw, the Lord, I said that earlier, Lord's dealing with that right now, healing him. Pains in all kinds of places. If you have anything in your body that you are believing God to heal right now, put your hand up. My dear brother, I see the glory of God all over you. And the authority of the Lord coming upon that thing. Pastor Jason and Jason, lay your hands on him. Anybody in here say, I need to be healed, put your hand up. All right, look at all these hands. I want Wendy and Kevin, Keelan, just anybody, any believers, you guys on the front row. I want you to lay hands on these. Everybody make sure there's somebody. Pastor Sherry there in the back. Make sure there's somebody praying for every person. Come on, we just had hundreds healed on Saturday praying just like this. We didn't even have a prayer line. We just began everybody laying hands on those of pain and infliction. So go ahead and make sure that somebody, we've got at least one person praying for every person. Some of you are full of the anointing and I have to go lay hands on more than one. Father, right now we lose the healing anointing. At home we lose the healing anointing. In fact, I command deafness to be healed at home. I command arthritis to come out. I command a broken ankle, the swelling, the supernatural to go down. I command cysts. And a woman's body to come out. You're going to pass those cysts. That injury to the eye that you've not seen normal since that automobile action. The Lord is healing it. That person that fell and your knee hasn't been normal since. And the Lord is healing it. We thank you, Lord. You sent the word to heal disease. We release healing now all over this place, online, at home. Be healed. We lose glory! 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 Lord, let your healing power flow. Jesus, we lose your power. <laughs> we command infirmity, come out. We command pain, go. We lose miracles now. Be made whole. The miracle power of God is here. Ears open. Pain go. Oh, 
Lord, we speak healing. If you're watching this at home, the Lord told me a number of years ago. He said, more people will get healed when you pray for miracles. If you involve them in the miracle. I said, Lord, what does that mean? He said, you ask them to do something. So typically if I pray for a deaf person, I say, take the hearing aid out. I understand some miracles are not instant. There's miracles, there's healings. Miracles are instant. Healings can be instant. They can be progressive. I tell the story. One time the Lord told me to pray for a guy in a wheelchair. Did he be healed? I prayed three, four times. Nothing happened. But six weeks later, he came out of the chair. And he said, that night I felt strength go into me. So we don't judge the measure of the power by what we see. But at the same time, in Jesus' ministry, there were instantaneous miracles and turnarounds. So if you couldn't move something, you couldn't hear, and especially at home. So I couldn't bend my knees. I want you to start bending your knees right now. Say, I had pain in my neck. You just start moving. I want you to try to do something. If it was internal and there's nothing you could do, then I understand that. But the Lord told me there'd be increase of miracles if we'd get involved with it. So in this room too, try just try to do something. If there's pain somewhere. Try to move. Look for it. Try to do something. Check yourself. You know, some people are so nervous. But this is what we should do when we pray for things. We should be looking for the turnaround, the breakthrough. Again, if it's not instant, that's okay. But there is a lot more instant things the Lord wants to do in an atmosphere of glory. Now, I can't ask you at home. But you can write to CTN or email, Facebook, and say, I was healed. You can post it on the Facebook stream, those that are watching. Somebody on the stream, I see the fuzziness in your vision. Like this little, it's clearing up. Father, I release clarity in that vision right now. A lady with a pregnancy that you're having some symptoms that are alerting you. That something is wrong. I just speak the miracle of God over that unborn child in the name of Jesus. And I say life over you. In the name of Jesus. Someone with a ringing in your ear right now. I take authority over that ringing. And I say be healed. Father, I release a healing mantle over television, over Facebook Live right now. In Jesus' name. Now tell us on Facebook Live. If you're watching and making, you can write, call. You can do it all over CTN. But tell us, and they'll tell us some of the testimonies possibly here. How many here you're checking yourself and you feel different? Pain's left you or something's changed. Put your hand up. One, two, three there in the back. What what is you had pain through here? Your neck and shoulders, and it's better now. Praise God. Sir, what was it? Your back and you removing it or something is better? Praise God. He says it's fine. Was there someone else back there on that side? Yes, Stephen? Was it up here in the upper? It's better, praise God. Was there someone over here? Anybody? You're breathing? Your breathing is better. Amen. Well, we say, Lord, even more than what we can presently see with our eyes. Even more and online, even more. See the Lord dealing with hearts online. I speak miracles and physical hearts in the authority of Jesus name now I want to do one more thing here in the studio and if you're at home you can join us in this but when Annie began to sing earlier the thing that brought me up here start prophesying was I saw weariness coming off of people and you know some people they think well if I'm weary yeah I will Lord and the Holy Ghost doesn't understand you know when I'm talking then he starts talking to me I guess he thinks he's in charge or something like that. Amen. That's the way it should be. But I, I, I saw weariness. Sometimes we think, well, if I'm getting weary, something's wrong with me. But sometimes, just as you're doing what God mandated you to do, and you're facing resistance, and you're facing your own flesh, and your own mind, the enemy tries to bring weariness. And I just saw the Lord tonight breaking weariness. And I was preaching in... Paso Robles, California. I got the bright idea to preach in three cities in three days and didn't figure L.A. traffic. And I had to go through L.A. twice, and that made three hours, five hours. And so I was in Paso Robles, 
And the Spirit of God began to speak to me about that territory. It's that dream of refreshing in this territory. God began to speak to me about the, the destiny that He wanted to bring in that territory. And I began to see the bombardment that people were under. And we began to release that breaker anointing. And things are just breaking open. I believe tonight things are just going to break open. And so I, I was in the, that meeting and the Lord said to me, He said, son, you're not going to pray for everybody tonight. I said, okay, what is going to happen? He said, you're going to do a prophetic act. You're going to ordain a regional healing team. I said, well, I don't even know anybody here. It's the first time I've ever been here. He said, call all the ministers. We had ministers from all over Santa Maria, California, Santa Barbara, California, all different ministers. And I called them and I laid hands on them and said, they thought I was going to prophesy. I said, I'm not going to prophesy to you. You're going to heal the sick. That's my prophecy to you. And so I commissioned them and they started healing the sick and people got healed all over. Then the last meeting I had was in San Bernardino. And I said, give me five spiritual sons of this house. They came up, they thought I was going to prophesy to them. I said, I'm not going to prophesy to you. I'm going to command you to heal the sick. And they started healing the sick. Deaf people started hearing. People started seeing. Things started happening. Listen, we're in the days of the ecclesia, where every member of the ecclesia, that, that's the word, the Greek word for church. It doesn't mean a building. It means a people. That every member is going to walk in their call and their destiny. And so tonight, if you're weary, the ecclesia is going to pour water over you. Now, if you're watching this, you say, well, I'm weary. Who's going to pour? I'm going to pray for you. But everybody in here say, I've just been battling weariness in my assignment. Put your hand up. All right? Kingdom people, I want you to lay hands on them right now. Listen, let's release an anointing. Let's release oil. You say, well, I don't have anything to give. Yes, you do. Everyone's been weary. Put your hand up. And let's lay hands on them. Look, there's hands here, hands here. Make sure everybody that has a hand up, someone is praying for them. And if you're at home right now, there's people with a prophetic mantle that are weary. There's evangelists that are weary. Listen, this is the hour the evangelists are going to rise in America. I was preaching in Chicago talking about R.W. Shamrock, and the Lord said, Nobody! It's tearing that mantle right now in America. There's evangelism and mantles, and the devil's trying to get you weary. But I prophesy a renewal of evangelists. I speak fire over you. I command weariness to go. I loose the oil of the Holy Ghost. Lord, blow. Blow. Blow on this place. Blow on these people. We release fresh wind, fresh rivers, fresh oil, fresh fur. Blood. your rivers. You release your rivers. Sir, is this your wife next to you? Yeah, I just began to see a book unfolded with prophetic downloads, one right after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And many of those things have been for appointed times. This is for you I'm talking. Many of those things the Lord showed me. The Lord said, I've invited you to the secret chambers. Many of those things I've told you for appointed times. And others of those things required the cooperation of human beings and they did not cooperate. And you have felt the guilt. Well, I spoke that out and it happened. But many did not receive that which was spoken. And they were not rejecting you, says the Lord. They were rejecting me. 
And tonight I deliver you from the heaviness of guilt that never belonged to you in the first place. I did place a prophetic spirit upon you. I did place a prophetic anointing upon you. And I did give you downloads and you even sent things for regions and people and territories and they did not receive it. But you were obedient. Some of those things were for appointed times and we've not come into the fullness of those times. Father, I just released fresh wind. The Lord said, you are called to be a prophetic person of intimacy. Father, I thank you for the glory of God. I thank you for the glory of God. My dear brother, the Lord is saying to you that he's delivering you from the house of Saul. Lord, I'm delivering you from the systems and the structures of Saul because I'm putting, I see Lord putting a fresh garment on you. And the Lord said, you're wanting this hour that's going to be a father to the broken. And you're wanting this hour that's going to speak prophetically to the broken. And you're wanting this hour that's going to pour into them. And I don't, I'm delivering you. I just see the Lord say, I'm delivering you from the house of Saul. And there are people that are trying to box you in and confine your ministry by their opinions. And it's really brought, brought pressure. And it's really brought fault false expectations. And Lord, I'm just undoing the whole thing in this hour. This is the hour for you of the undoing. And even part of this is some things are crumbling down, but they're crumbling down so God can build that thing that needs to be built. And God can do that thing that needs to be done. And the Lord said, have faith and trust me. And watch, I'm going to do a great thing in this day through you. I'm going to do a great thing in this day in you. I'm creating a, a hunger and a dependency upon me. I'm shifting the whole paradigm inside of you. And it's a hunger paradigm. The hunger paradigm. That they'll know you've been with me. And because you've been with me, they can eat off that manna which I've given unto you. For I'm not giving you manna from the spirit of a man, but from my spirit. I'm giving you manna for the moment, says the Lord. There's a, pro, uh, I don't know the word, proclaiming spirit on you to proclaim that which God would say in this hour. And there'll be a fierce resistance to that which you proclaim, but the Lord said, I'm managing you with strength to stand under their opposition. But they're trying to oppose you, but it's not them. It's that which is behind them. I just set you free to do that which you've been called to do in this hour. And I see this tidal wave, you know, like... A tsunami and it comes in and just rips everything up. And Lord, so this has been a season of the tsunami in your life and in your assignment and your ministry that some things have been ripped up. You said, oh Lord, this has been grievous, this has been difficult. But the Lord said, I've been ripping those things up. But there is coming a cleansing through this tsunami. And on the other side of this, there's going to be a dramatic rebuilding. But it's going to be a building of glory. Father, we just thank you. 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 This girl on the end here with the sweater, the white, the, this girl right here. I, I, I just see that the, you're, you're having some encounters and some visitations. There's an angel that is bringing revelation to you. And there's somebody in your family. I don't know if it was a grandmother. Or it's a lady. It's an older lady. And she carried a real prophetic mantle. She, she saw things in the spirit. She prayed. She knew things. And that mantle has skipped a generation come on you strongly. And there's a revelatory angel. I don't know if you know what it is. And I don't even know fully what I'm saying. I'm just saying what I see. There's a revelatory angel, especially in the night season. The night season is a seen season for you. And things come to you and, and you think like, where is this coming from? But this angel is bringing communication to you. The Lord says, don't be afraid of this. People think you're off and they think you're strange and think you're weird. But it's because of the level of revelation. And I'm not saying that to boost you up because people can get off and get strange and get weird. But I just, I'm seeing this. I just saw this lady and she carried this this mantle of revelation and it skipped a generation and came on you and it started when you were a little child people thought you had a vivid and active imagination even when you would color things you would color things and pictures and create things and you would say where did you see that and at the time you didn't even know where you saw it but it was coming out of the realm of the spirit Lord so I deal with you very strongly in the realm of vision you see things and know things and there's an angel that's hooked up with that now I don't know what you're supposed to do with it but the Lord's going to teach you to steward the Lord said much prayer 
That's the classroom for this. Does that make sense to you? All right. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you tonight. Thank you for the glory of God. Almighty Holy Ghost. I'll tell you, there's just a real strength in God. There's a real strength. I saw that shield and I saw dents in it, but the Lord was just putting those dents out and polishing that shield up. There's a real strength in the identity the Lord's got for you. welcome your wind, your fire, your glory tonight. We know you're here, but we just say, come in greater glory. Come in greater power. Even now, those watching, we say, mighty Holy Spirit, come. Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God. I just want you to tell the Lord tonight, I'm hungry, Lord. Thirsty, God. Oh, Holy Spirit. You know, I've probably said this here numerous times, but in, in my life a few years ago when the Lord began to stir a real fresh passion for the power of God and the supernatural and awakening and revival and Many things I had known for years, but the Lord began to stir a fresh passion for it. One of the very first things the Lord taught me about it. So, Lord, you know, we, we're good as preachers go around and say, well, you need revival. And it's like, we go, well, you need to pray, and we're not praying. You need to read your Bible, and we're not reading our Bibles. And the Lord said to me, so Ryan, you'll never have revival in a group of people until you personally begin to burn in revival. So I believe one of the things we need to do is draw a perimeter around ourselves and say revival begins here. Well, people will say, well, we want you to come and we see the hand of God on you and we want you to come into our church, spark revival. Well, listen, if you're not pressing to these things and contending for these things, it's not going to create any kind of traction because you've got to steward the flame that's there. And in our own hearts, the Lord wants to teach us how to steward the flame. And if we're going to steward the flame, we can't be in control. This is not a, I, I wrote this recently, it's not an hour for a controlled burn. This is an hour for the wildfires of God. You know, we can't say, well, Lord, we want your fire as long as you don't make us uncomfortable. We want your fire as long as you don't knock us in the floor the whole meeting. We want your fire as long as we don't have some weird thing happen. 
Listen, when you get in the glory realm, weird things may happen. But if it's truly God, when you come on the other side of it, your life is going to be forever changed in the right direction, in the right way. Lord, we just say we're thirsty and hungry tonight. Those in Macon, those watching this on television in the different markets, we just say we're hungry, say we're thirsty. In the name of Jesus. You know, it was the great raising the dead preacher Smith Wigglesworth that said, it's an awful thing in somebody's, and I'm paraphrasing, awful thing in somebody's spiritual life when they lose their hunger. This is the thing, when you lose your hunger, it doesn't matter what kind of atmosphere. See, we have these people that come and say, well, I'm going to check it out and see what God does. Most time, not much for you. Now, you have lost people and people that don't really know anything and they come into an atmosphere like that and the grace of God will touch them. But for children of God, children are supposed to be in pursuit. There, there is no scripture that says they just come and check it out. It's like when you read your Bible, you're not opening and go, well, I'm going to see if God will speak to me. No, no, you're opening with the expectation God is going to speak. So you come into a meeting, you come to a prayer thing, you come to anything. And there's got to be expectation. If the devil can strip you of expectation, he can strip you from the whole thing. And many of us, why we're weary is because we've lost our expectation. And expectation is that childlike wonder. When I try to figure everything out, why well, I need to figure out why God's doing this, God. No. Try to figure it all out. You lose your childlike expectation. Sometimes you don't understand why God is moving in a certain way or using a certain person or doing a certain thing, but you just trust God. And it's in the wonder you encounter Him. Amen? Well, thank you, Father. I tell you, I feel the glory of God. Man, it's been rich tonight. I looked at my watch and I can't believe we've been doing this this long. But I want to share something with you for just a few minutes so you can be seated if you can. Those that are joining us right now, Pastor Jason, I'm going to need my computer as well as my Bible. Those that are joining us by way of streaming or television or whichever capacity you're joining us, we just want to welcome you tonight to the outpouring. And listen, I don't need those, I just need, thank you. Uh, listen, heed the counsel that I just gave you, those that are joining us right now, because don't, don't sit there and say, well, thank you. It's nice what God's doing in that studio, wherever it's at, but God's doing nothing in my home. That's just not true. That's a lie from the enemy. Amen. Now I want to preach a few minutes. And I, as the worship went on, I thought, well, maybe I just don't need to preach. But, you know, I believe in a, in a form of revival that's the Spirit and the Word. Now that doesn't mean that we always preach because if the Lord does it, we don't have to preach. But many times we'll think a revival is just an experiential thing. But I believe revival is much deeper than that. It's the Word and the Spirit of God colliding in our lives and opening up the realms of glory. Amen? And the Lord just hit me with this this afternoon. And for those that maybe follow me on Facebook, I did a Facebook Live along these lines a couple of days ago, but the Lord has downloaded some new content to go with this. But I want to talk just a moment tonight about the spirit of religion. And I want to title this, The Spirit of Religion, A Revival Killer. I believe the spirit of religion wants to kill and contaminate revival in your life. Revive means to bring something back to life again. There are areas of your life where the devil's robbed your hope, and God wants to bring those things back to life again. But the spirit of religion is a revival killer. And many of us are laboring and prophesying and praying. And there's opposition. See, this is what people don't realize. A lot of times there's two levels of opposition you face. There's the opposition in your own life that's personal because of what you're contending for, what you're believing for. And then there's opposition in a region and in territory. And many times you're getting blasted by what's in a region or a territory. Particularly if you're laboring in that region, in that territory. So I want to unpack this. It's time to kill the spirit of religion. 
For us to move in the glory of God, in revival, in the power, in the presence of God on the level He wants us to, it's time to break the back of the spirit of religion. It's time to kill and crucify and slay the spirit of religion in our life. It's time that we get so mad at the spirit of religion that we say, we will not let this spirit influence me on any way, shape, or form. I'm going after the fullness of what God's got for me. And many of us are being influenced by the spirit of religion. We don't even know it. So I want to unpack this. Let's look at Matthew 22. Matthew 22. You know, in some cities, the greatest opposition to the move of God is the organized church. Because we've got our own idea. Some of you got offended when I said that. That's a good... If you felt that, uh, that's a good indicator. Maybe there's a spirit of religion working there. But we've got our own ideas how God can move and how God can't move. Many people are in churches praying, God send revival. And the reality is, you're the only one there that wants revival. And you're trying to get a dead giant to rise up when you should go and join some living people that want the move of God. Thank you for that underwhelming response. See, the spirit of religion will deceive you. Because the spirit of religion always qualifies you through works. Qualifies you through works. Well, you know, you've been here for 10 years, but so what? So what? If God's got something new for you to do, it doesn't matter that you've been there for 10 years. I believe in this hour and this time we're living in, we've got to move with God. We don't have time to just sit somewhere and stagnate and burn out. Many of us are getting burnt out because we're not moving with God. I believe that God is going to move in an unprecedented way in America. Uh, just last weekend, uh, one of the other speakers where I was speaking got up and said, you know, the Lord showed me the stadiums in America being filled with people and the glory of God going through there. And I had seen the same thing. said, I saw the fire of God coming so strong and so with violent eruption and force that you could not control the move of God that God was knocking whole sections down under the power and the glory and they were shaking and they were trembling and devils were coming out and miracles were happening and man could not control it and I believe God wants to do these things in the nation of America again but I believe we're going to have to crucify the spirit of religion when these things happen many people in the church are going to be offended people outside the church are not going to be offended they might laugh at it they might mock it, but they're not going to be offended. It's the religious people that are going to be offended. Matthew twenty two fifteen said, Then the Pharisees went and plotted together. This was the religious people that day. They went and plotted together how they might trap him in what he said. And they sent their disciples, the other religious people, to the Herodians saying, Teacher, or with the Herodians rather, they sent them to Jesus saying, Teacher, we know that you're truthful to teach the way of God and truth and defer to no one. You're not partial to any. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to give a tax to Caesar or not? <coughs> now watch this. But Jesus perceived their mouths. He looked beyond what they were saying with their lips and he saw the spirit behind it. We need a prophetic spirit upon the ecclesia of this hour to look beyond what people are saying. People can say nice things, they can say flattering things, but the spirit behind it may not be right. The Lord showed me a broadening chasm in the body of Christ. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he said, there's going to be a broadening chasm between those that have a prophetic spirit and those that don't. And said so those that don't are going to get offended with those that do. Because those that do are going to announce and pronounce things by the discerning of spirits and identifying the spirits behind the thing. And those that don't have a prophetic spirit are going to get upset and say, well, they're not walking in love. See, you don't love demons. And that's the problem. You've got, to, you've got to expose them and confront them and cast them out. And devils, if we really love people, then when we see a devil trying to take somebody out, we're going to go after that thing with full force. And then many times in the church, we're not seeing deliverance on the measure we want to see it. People are in unending deliverance sessions over and over and over and over again, 15 years trying to get free, when the reality is a good prophetic shaking of identifying what's going on and breaking its power would launch them into freedom, but they're not ready to receive that because they find that offensive. Jesus looked beyond what they were saying, and Jesus identified their malice, and he said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Now, Jesus didn't mince any words here. He understood the spirit that was at work, and the spirit of religion is offensive to the kingdom of God, and this is the problem, is we were not offended many times, by what God's offended by. 
we're petting the spirit of religion. No, we don't want to upset you. We don't want to offend you. We don't want to make you mad. And we don't, you know, I, I was saying this in Chicago last weekend. I'm going back to Chicago this weekend. I was saying Chicago last week, and I said, I feel sorry for these people. That they build, you know, a big church by being nice to everybody. And they never preach anything controversial. They never have miracles. Devils never come out in their services. And they're going to die. And people are going to go to their funeral. They're going to cry and say, oh, he died. He was so nice. And five years later, there's not going to be any vacancy in their city because they didn't occupy a post. They start out with a call from God. People didn't write about Smith Wigglesworth. They say, oh, he was so nice to everybody. They say, he raised the dead and punched cancer out of people. They don't write about John G. Lake. They say, well, he, he never offended anybody. When he preached, he never upset anybody. They write about John G. Lake, and they say, you know what? He transformed the city with the power of God. Now, the flip side of what I'm not saying is this. I'm not saying that we intentionally go in and try to be mean to people or offend people. That's not what I'm saying. But the point of what I'm saying is this. I feel sorry for these people that they live their whole lives trying to satisfy a group of people and they think by amassing a certain number of followers they've gained influence. But the five minutes after they died, nobody's going to remember anything they said or anything they did. They're just remember, going to remember that they were nice and they adapted their preaching and their ministry to the climate of their city and they never pushed back at the climate and they never pushed forward to try to change the climate. Instead, they adapted to the climate and they bowed to that ruling spirit and that city is exactly the same when they die as it was the day they got there and I say let it not be so in our generation and so if we're going to transform cities let alone states or nations we're going to have to take on the religious spirit because the religious spirit wants to maintain the atmosphere of a city the religious spirit has a grip on territories and regions and the little spirit wants to maintain that grip. And so anytime, you understand this, you can sing, you know, how great thou art. And the religious spirit will stand right there and clap with you and sing with you. Why? Is it, and you can sing a prophetic song and the religious spirit will clap with you. You can get religious in being prophetic. You can get religious in being revival. You know, I see these people have four hour meetings and the Holy Ghost was done in hour two. But they think revival is a four-hour means. Revival is the move of God. And the move of God's an hour, that's revival. If you win three extra hours, that's religion. The same spirit that says, well, God can only move for an hour is the same spirit that said God has to move four hours. It's not about volume, it's about impact. One word can shift your life. And religious demons hate life-shifting, city-shaking, regional transforming words. Religious spirits want to keep the atmosphere the same. And so people move into territories with a call from God to go confront the principalities and powers in that territory. And the religious spirit shows up immediately and begins resisting them. The spirit of religion is perhaps one of the strongest spirits working in the earth, in the demonic realm. And the spirit of religion shackles people to works without life. Whenever you feel yourself start going through motions and you're losing the sense of the life of God, that's, that's a grip of the religious spirit. You know, I had it happen to me a number of years ago. I had a, a dear friend of mine, a really powerful servant of the Lord. But, but the, the, this person taught, you know, you have to pray X number of hours. <clears throat> so I was praying this X number of hours and God really started transforming my life. But then I began to travel a lot. And sometimes, you know, I'm on an airplane and I pray on the airplanes, but I can't sit there and do what I was doing in my home in the same manner. And I'd get to where I was going, and that religious spirit would say to me, well, there's not going to be power tonight, because you didn't set that right song, you didn't have your lighting right, and you weren't praying so many hours, and you weren't this loud, and you weren't doing this, and you weren't doing that, and you weren't doing this. And one day, after about a year of that, I realized to myself, I have made prayer a religion. So you didn't make anything a religion. Where well, it has to be loud to be a move of God. I'm just loud, period. It's not that it's a move of God, it's just me. So it not have to be loud to be a move of God. It can be quiet. See, we make everything, you know, it's just, well, you've got to do this to produce the presence of God. No, all we've got to do is say, Father, what do you want to do? And then we start doing what He says. And that's the challenge for religious people, because religious people go, no, you can't do that. Well, I got saved yesterday and I went out and, and opened up the ears of a deaf person. Said, well, you can't do that. Well, I didn't know I couldn't do it, so I just did it. 
Well, I, I, I just learned about the gift of prophecy three days ago, and I prophesied to four people, and they were just weeping because it was so accurate. Well, wait a minute, you can't do that. You didn't go through our prophetic school. Well, I didn't know that. See, and that religious spirit tells you all the things you can't do. Well, you know, you can't. I, 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 there's people now, I was just sitting across the table and someone, and they said, we went into a territory to plant a church. Now, this is going to make the religious spirit really mad. Those that are watching on web stream, if you're a religious preacher or something, I want you to just pose, uh, you know, let your hearing come alive right now because I'm going to offend you really good. And then you can go eat a Twinkie or something and get off the web stream, okay? But here's the thing. I sit across the table from this guy, and he says, I, we went into a city to plant a church. And this man says, you can't come in this city and plant a church because I'm the apostle of this city. Well, that sounds like a soul to me and not a David. See, I don't think God's going to move. These people say, well, this is my city. It's not your city. Jesus is the only king, and it's King Jesus. And Jesus can move in every city and every nation the way he wants to. And when you get the idea that the gate, that the gate of the kingdom runs through your mouth and your heart, you need to repent because you're crippled by a soul spirit and a religious uh, mentality. And you need to be set free. And we have these people, and, and you know, this man told this young church planner, said, you come into my territory without my permission, I'll shut you down. Well, that's just cross past religion and the witchcraft there. But we have these people, you they think you can't go and pray for anybody in their city. Would to God that there's so many miracles on the street, we have to sort it all out. You know, on Sunday morning, we're just trying to get all the testimonies because the ecclesia has been so activated. They've been healing the sick and casting out devils. Jesus did not come with the message of restriction, but one of liberty and one of freedom. Now, I understand that there's an order to things, okay? I understand, you know, I, in, in all of our meetings, I, I don't just let, you know, someone come say, I've got an hour of prophetic words. I don't just let, and it's not because I don't believe that they have an hour of prophetic words. They may very well. It's that you're administering and stewarding the amount of time that you have. I understand the Bible says, know them that labor amongst you. I understand there's an order to things. But I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking of people that have a mentality that it's their job to tell when, where, and how the Holy Ghost can move. And that's the manifestation of religious spirit. Jesus perceived their malice and said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? You know, the religious spirit tests the heart of the Lord. It challenges the kingdom concepts of heaven. He said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the poll tax. They brought him the coin. He said to them, whose likeness? They said, Caesar's. He said, then render to Caesar things, Caesar to God. Those that were God's. Hearing this, they were amazed. And leaving him, they went away. Now, I want to, I want to show you four things here. Number one, they conspired against Jesus. The religious spirit is the ultimate conspiracy theory. Because it conspires. Whenever there's a religious spirit working, it, it never... See, the prophetic spirit confronts. I'm amazed the church, you know, still hadn't learned Matthew 18. Because we're praying about everybody that offended us. You know, you, you know what that is, the Pentecostal prayer line? <laughs> then they call and say, well, I, we need to pray for brother so-and-so. You know, he's really got a wrong heart and a wrong spirit. And all the people on those phone calls, they never go to the one they're praying for. See, praying for is religious terminology for gossiping. Well, we need to pray for Pastor. He lost the anointing. Well, we need to pray. Pray for my mother-in-law. You know, she just caused me a lot of trouble. I love her. Bless her heart. That's, you know, that's southern cussing. Pray, pray for her, you know. And, and, and that's, that's gossip. That's, what, that's Christianese for gossip. And we never go to the person. Matthew 18 says, go to the person if they offend you. And so the religious spirit conspires and it's all these secret conversations. And it really gets offended at truth. The Bible said it's the presence of truth and the acknowledgement of that truth that brings freedom. They were offended by truth that Jesus was giving, but they, yet they honored dead traditions. It's like when you talk to people and they say, well, I just don't believe that. I remember I had a relative who said, I just don't believe you can speak in tongues. I said, well, let me show you. Well, I just don't believe that scripture. I got the Bible to show and I read scripture after scripture. And they just stared at me and they said, I don't believe that. And I said, based on what? I just don't believe it. 
See, that's what the religious spirit does. It's offended by truth, but it holds fast to dead, dry traditions. I want to say to you that I believe we're to go from glory to glory. I believe that part of the work of revival is to bring us to life and air. Part of the work of awakening is to breathe fresh insight and fresh vision and fresh revelation. To go from faith to faith, that means we have to go from revelation to revelation. From understanding to understanding. And, you know, it's so many times we say, well, I still believe everything I believed 15 years ago. Well, that's not always a good thing. See, it's like I used to believe that, 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 that there was no Jesus. But I changed that theology. You say, well, I, I, you know, I got born again, but since then I've never changed my theology. Well, what you're saying to me is you've potentially never grown. You've potentially never come in any other revelation. You've potentially never come in any other truth. See, I've found the longer I walk with Jesus, the more facets of Him I discover. And the discovery requires me to reform my theology. Some things I think now, me 15 years ago would have said, me now is wacky. But me now is happier than me 15 years ago. Why? Because me now is freer than me 15 years ago. I let go of some traditions. They, they held secret meetings against Jesus. They were meeting. How are we going to trap Jesus in this passage of Scripture? And they held those secret meetings to try to trap Him. And they were bound together by common offense. Wherever there's a religious spirit, there'll be offense. Because offense is the marker of a religious spirit. Religious people are offended by everything. If you just shout, they say, well, that's too loud. I'm serious. You think it's funny, but it's serious. I mean, I've never seen online Pentecost people get angry because someone got the Holy Ghost too fast. I just heard a preacher uh, on Saturday preaching. He said, I grew up in a denomination where you had to tarry for the Holy Ghost. And he said, I got saved. And they said, if you want the Holy Ghost, go to the altar. He said, I didn't know you had to tarry. So I just went up there with the altar and said, Shaka baha tala baha sa. And people got mad. He said, I didn't know any better. You know, when I first started preaching, I, God would start healing people before I preached. Nine times out of ten. Someone came to me and said, brother, don't you know you can't do that? Free people don't know what they can do. Takes the religious person to educate you on what you can't do. And I said, I can't do what? They said, you can't heal before you preach because signs follow the word. You've got to preach first. I said, well, Jesus wasn't always preaching when he healed people. Sometimes he was walking. Peter's shadow was healing people. Then they came to me and said, you can't prophesy more than three times in a meeting. Because they take that scripture, you know, about three. And then they, they said, you, you get too much prophecy, you get wacky. And see, they tell you all these restrictions. Well, you, can, you know, you can't see angels. You know, when Peter got delivered out of prison, they, they had no challenge with the concept of an angel showing up the door. They were freaked out that Peter showed up. Why? Because it was normal for that company of people to see angels. It was normal for them to experience angels. We justify our lukewarmness by religion. I religious people say, well, I don't want them to get too radical. Well, that's the problem, because it makes you uncomfortable. <clears throat> All night prayer meetings freak me out. You don't have to do that. Well, you don't have to, but you might want to. See, religious people just want to play it safe. Why? Because they, they don't want to be challenged. Then they came to Jesus and they used flattery to his face, but the ultimate goal was to take him out. The ultimate goal of a religious spirit is to take Jesus out of the equation. To leave all the praying, all the works, all the this and all of that, but no Jesus. That's why religious people are offended by the power and by movement. Revival is the restoration of life. It's the restoration of vision. It's the releasing of glory. It's the releasing of anointing. Revival brings awakening. It wakes you up in areas. Revival stirs up plans and stirs up purposes. It releases rivers of living water. It brings transformation. Revival gives way to reform, to changing things. It's like a tidal wave that picks things up and moves them around. When revival hits a church, it'll pick things up and move it around. It'll make everybody uncomfortable. So don't pray for revival. But you're not ready to swim in the deep. It's just like a tidal wave that comes in. When revival comes into your heart, comes into your life, and wakes you up in certain areas, it's like a tidal wave that comes through you. you find yourself getting up at four in the morning, praying, saying, I didn't even mean to get up at four. I'm just hungry. Amen. It destroys the yokes, and religious spirits hate the move of God because they hate the yoke that is destroyed. Religious spirits that fight what I call spirit life, living with a fervent, Life in the Spirit. They fight the glory of God. And they dim visions. 
One of the things religious spirits do that really aggravate me is they spend so much time debating and arguing. They're debating when Jesus is coming back, if Jesus is coming back, how Jesus is coming back, what it's going to look like, when it's going to look like. Meanwhile, they could be out healing the sick. They could be out casting out devils. They could be out doing the works of God. When instead they're arguing, 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 arguing. They argue over if the Greek word really means that, the Hebrew word really means that. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't contend for knowledge and information. But if all you've got is a bunch of concepts with no demonstration, you've got religion. And religious spirit spends all its time. And here's the thing. They argue and debate legitimate kingdom concepts. One way you can judge the strength of any revelation and prophetic concept is by the measure of resistance it receives. When you get that resistance to whatever you're releasing, it's confirmation that you're on target and you just need to press on. Amen? Religious spirits come into a territory and pressure apostolic and prophetic ministry gets to bow down to that. They pressure to bow to traditions. Well, if you just back off of that a little bit. They pressure. We don't do those things here that way. Well, that's why God sent me to get you to change. Because if we're going to have a move of God, we're going to have to do it differently. Well, that, 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 that won't work here. I've been told that many, many times. Well, that won't work. Well, it is working, so you can't tell me it won't work. It might not work for you, but that, that, that's all right. It'll work for somebody else. They pressure these gifts to bow to traditions and opinions. The reality is that these traditions, these opinions, act as the very thing that restricts and contains the move of God. Amen? In Mark 7, 13, it said they make the word of God of none effect by the traditions of men. Now, I want to give you seven, and this is what I did on Facebook the other day, but then I'm going to talk about how to break this and kill this spirit. But quickly, I want to give you seven identifying marks of religious spirit. And they all start with the letter C. Remember what I'm saying tonight in all over America, wherever you're watching this. I believe God wants to send a great awakening to America, but we cannot be bound up by a religious spirit. I believe today as you're watching this, as you're listening to this, I believe the power of God wants to come in your life and come in your heart and wake you up. And I believe by the end of this message, we're going to come before the Lord and say, if there's any bit of a religious spirit inside of me, don't point at your friend, don't point at your mother-in-law, don't point at your pastor. But you, that, that's the problem with spirit your warfare teaching. Preach on the Jezebel spirit. We're always looking. Who's the Jezebel? You know, that's not the way. And then we got the other camp. You know, I saw the other day on Facebook. People, they were my friends making fun of Jezebel spirits. I thought, well, you'll think it's funny until one comes in your church, picks you up like the WWE and body slams you. I never preached one message on Jezebel until she came, picked me up, threw me through the air and body slammed me and then picked me up and body slammed me. And after three times, I said, I got to figure out what this is. Right, come on. And that's when I started preaching on It's like, you know, one man said to me, well, I, I just don't believe in that kind of deliverance ministry where people get embarrassed. I said, well, you know, when you're preaching in Belize and a youth pastor that's a little skinny guy, a little, little rail thin guy, picks up three bodybuilders and body slams them against the wall and green stuff starts coming out of his mouth, then you'll change your theology. You can have theology like that because you've never dealt with those sort of things. But when you've dealt with those things, when God has sent you to nations and ruling powers have shown up in your hotel and said, if you don't leave this country, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to kill the team with you, then you can have this little nice deliverance thing you've got going. But when those principalities show up and start smacking you in the face, you get a different theology. See, when the real power of God comes in, it's not like it's a little nice. Well, we're going to interview you. You know, well, five years ago, you know, I wanted this flower and somebody took it from me and I got a wound. And, and, and you know, there's a spiritual attachment there. And da, da, da. You know, that, that's one thing. But when people try to attack you, I was preaching in Croatia and a member of the mafia showed up and tried to attack me. Well, I didn't know who he was. He was sitting in his seat and the, the devil told him, go hurt that man. He sort of walked in the front and he got right in front of me and the, the, the Spirit of God came on me and said, that man's in darkness, start binding it up. I said, you're in darkness and I bind you in the authority of Jesus. And he froze and couldn't move. All he could do is put his hands out towards me and he grabbed me around the waist and started squeezing. Well, the more he squeezed, the louder I prayed. The more he squeezed, the louder I prayed. And all of a sudden, the power of God hit him and down he went crying out to God. God delivered him. He came out of the mafia. They said, we're going to kill you. He said, you can kill me, but let me tell you about Jesus first. When he told him about Jesus, they said, we know you've been changed. You can go out. Then he went through the Bible college, and now when I go preach in Croatia, he's my driver several years later. Delivered by the power of God. Amen? 
I mean, you see, people have these theologies. Now, I believe there's times you sit across and count someone. I'm not saying this now, but what I'm saying is there's also times that a radical encounter happens and shakes somebody. You know, in Jesus' ministry, there's a radical encounter that, that shook people. And so there's eight, eight words here that, that are identifying Mark. And, and again, some of the things we do wrong with spiritual warfare teachings, we go and accuse everybody of having that spirit. Most people we've said have a Jezebel spirit don't have a Jezebel spirit. They just have a bad personality. Oh, she's the Jezebel. I'm telling you, oh, he's got that Jezebel. So, oh, he's an Ahab. And we go around just labeling everything. Not everybody's demon possessed, but some are. And so, with these revelations, the thing that you have to do to make this thing healthy is the first place you start for deliverance is right here. I don't know who has a Jezebel spirit, but I know I'm not going to have one. God shows me one in someone, then I'm going to identify it and break it and do all I can to stay away from that. But I'm not going to go around and accuse everybody that does something I don't like of having a Jezebel spirit. But the other side of extreme error is to say, well, nobody has a Jezebel spirit. You know, the person who's right on Facebook, well, has somebody cut off the heads of the prophets? Somebody done this, somebody done that, somebody did this. Well, that's not what the book of Revelation says. The book of Revelation says that the Jezebel spirit coming in the church to seduce the servants. So yes, there's a person named Jezebel, but there's an operation of that spirit that can come on different levels and bind and afflict people. And it's wrong theology to just say, well, unless it's that extreme, it's not the working of that. So we have two sides of the ditch. One side where we're blaming everybody they've got a spirit. Another side where we're just walking around in la land. Nobody's got a spirit and everything going on is okay. We just don't want to talk about anything bad or anything negative. Praise the Lord because we're good. And I preach in those churches and they're full of devils. Why? Because there's no authority. In the absence of authority, there's demons. Now, the other side of it, and again, I'm going to go give you right on the other hand. The other side of it is you can get so authoritative, you're trying to control the Holy Ghost. There's a thing called balance in life. Yes, there are devils. Yes, you have to cast them out. Does everybody that gets on my nerves has a demon? No. But am I going to get a theology that nobody does? No. So seven C's of the religious spirit. Number one, it contains... Spirit life is about freedom and identity. The religious spirit puts you in a box and contains you. It contains the dreams, the destinies, the plans, the purpose. It's a containment thing. It contains you. Second thing, it confines you. The religious spirit rejects revelation. It rejects breakthrough. It boxes people in. It contains. It confines. Third thing, it complains. Well, we don't like what he said. Well, good. I'm glad. If I can offend you, then I can get you to get in the Word and find out if what I said was true. We've traded our prophetic identity for political acceptance and offerings. I don't have to be accepted by everybody, just by one person. Now the other side of that is I'm not going around trying to offend people. Do you know, I had this vision of the fire of God in stadiums and the Lord said something to me that pricked my heart. He said, Ryan, you steward the coal that's touched your lips. He said, no matter what pressure, no matter what persecution, no matter what friends you lose, you don't back off of what I give you to say. You say what I tell you to say. You give voice. We talked earlier about the sound. You release the sound. I called you to sound. There, there are other people releasing sounds that I so appreciate. I'm so thankful for. But it's not the sound God has given me to release. And religious spirits always try to constrict the sound. It's amazing when you get people with a lot of religious spirits. They're upset by the volume of the worship. Ah... If Mariah Carey comes to town, nobody goes up on the edge of the stage. Excuse me, excuse me. This is too loud. It's your favorite band from when you were a teenager come to town. You bought a concert ticket. You don't go. Nobody went to the World Series. And so I have an announcement. There's too much exuberance here. There's too much volume. And my ears are hurting. But yet you get worship going. Oh, God. Why? Because it's a religious spirit trying to stop the release of the sound. It confines, it complains. To complain is to remain. For it criticizes. This is one of the most prominent operations of religious spirit. It's a critical attitude. It debates. It disagrees. It fault finds. It brings negativity. Five, it controls. Religious spirit controls people and brings false mindsets, false identity, false concept. This is one reason we need teaching to break the religious spirit. Six, it compromises. 
The religious spirit dilutes the potency, dilutes the power of God. It abandons the plan of God and pursues building its own kingdom. It, it, it accepts popularity over progress. It brings compromise. Seven, it condemns. The religious spirit condemns. Jesus came to set us gloriously free. He didn't come to condemn us. The Bible didn't say there's condemnation in Jesus. It said there's no condemnation. The religious spirit comes and say, well, God could use you, but you had a bad thought when you were five years old. Brings condemnation. Now, how do we break this thing? I want to kill the religious spirit. I believe that the religious spirit is a revival killer. I believe God is saying to towns and cities and regions, I want to wake you up. I want to lose anointing. I want to lose the tsunami of my spirit. But we've got to slay that religious demon. How do we do this? I'm going to give you a few things. And then, Jason, if you still feel to give that word, you'd give that word at the end of this. How do we break it? Number one, we've got to identify it can't break what you don't identify. There's two ways that I believe we can identify the religious spirit. Number one is by the gift of the discerning of spirits. I believe this is why we so desperately need a prophetic spirit on the ecclesia, that we need to see things in the spirit. The discerning of spirits is not fault finding. It's not negative. It's not criticism. This is another bad theology we've got that if we discern any spirits, you know, some of these people would have been following Paul around when that girl was saying, these men are servants of the Most High God. And they said, Brother Paul, don't you know, that's not New Testament. You shouldn't be confronting that. You're embarrassing her, Paul. No, Paul had such radical faith. He said, I don't care if I get locked in jail. I refuse to leave this girl bound. I'm going to break the power. He saw in the realm of the Spirit. There's a supernatural 1 Corinthians 12 gift in verse 10 of the discerning of spirits. It's spiritual night vision to let you see the Spirit motivating a person or situation. And it's not for preachers, it's for all believers. We need the discerning of spirits. Sometimes we're dealing with things in our lives and we don't know how to get through and we need the discerning of spirits. In the Greek, the word discern there in 1 Corinthians 12, 10, it's, it's uh, diakresis. It means to distinguish, and here's a terrible cuss word in the Christian church these days, and to judge. To distinguish and to judge. That's what the Greek word for discern means. To distinguish and to judge. We are going to judge uh, planets and worlds and the eternal kingdom. You're going to be rulers. Judgment is rulership. You go in the courtroom and the judge says, no, guilty. What's he doing? He's legislating, ruling. Part of the meaning of the word equity, it means legislative body. Authorized ones, militarized ones. We re renounce the judgments of God. Well, discerning is judging and saying, you know what? I see this spirit trying to steal the destiny of this person's life and I'm going to go after this thing in prayer. It's seeing the thing behind the scenes and then bringing the judgment of the Lord upon, bringing the authority of the Lord upon. I'm not talking about the person because we don't war against people. We war against spirits. Secondly, we've got to take authority. We cannot tolerate the religious spirit. When the religious spirit is in operation, there's no manifestation of power and authority. We need in America the power and the authority of heaven. We need to see revival. To see the religious spirit as a revival killer because it takes the power, it takes the authority and destroys it. And we need that power. We need that authority. There, 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 there can be head knowledge under a religious paradigm, but no moving of the spirit, no legitimate authority. There can be a spirit of control, of fleshly authority, but no kingdom authority. What did Jesus say? Well, in Luke 10, 19, he said, I give you authority, power and authority, to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. In Luke 4, 31, he went to Capernaum of Galilee, was teaching on the Sabbaths. They were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. In the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon and cried out, said, leave us alone. What have you had to do with this Jesus of Nazareth? He said, be silent and come out of him. The demon threw him down in their midst and then came out of him and did not hurt him. Listen, they were all amazed. And what did they say? Listen to this. They said, what is this? For with authority and power, he commands unclean spirits. His fame went out all abroad. And they literally said in Mark 3, 22, uh, the, 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 in Mark, I mean, it says in the same account in the book of Mark, they were amazed because he did not teach as the scribes. Who were the scribes, the religious people of that day? They had knowledge but no power. Religion empowers knowledge with no power. They were amazed because Jesus had power. Demons came out. Miracles took place. In Mark, but now watch this. This is what a religious spirit will do. In Mark 3, 22, the scribes came down from Jerusalem and this is what they said about Jesus. He is possessed by Beelzebub, 
And by the ruler of demons, he cast out demons. The religious spirit saw that this guy had power and got mad. Why? Because they had no power. Why did they have no power? Because they had no spirit life. They were trapped in works and bondage and, and fueling their own insecurities, their own inadequacies when the Lord of glory was standing in front of them and bringing them to freedom. But they could not let go of their traditions and so they couldn't receive the Word become flesh. And when they see Jesus walking in power, they say, you know what? This guy has got a demon. He's casting out demons by demons. They came with accusation. Again, the religious spirit will bring accusation and bring attacks to try to attempt to abort the power of God. So we've got to discern it. Now we can discern it, number one, by the discerning of spirits. We've got to identify. But there's a second way. We can learn to recognize the characteristics. That's why I'm teaching these things. So it's good when the Holy Ghost shows you. Oh, that's a religious spirit. But if that gift's not operating, it's like the gift of prophecy. It's good when the Lord says, prophesy to him. The Lord came on me during worship to prophesy to you. But now what if he came to me and said, Ryan, I'm battling. Da, 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 da. Well, I need to know the ways of God. So out of the ways of God, I can lift up knowledge and revelation and set him free with it. And that's what we've got to do. We can identify the religious spirit by his learning its characteristics. Second thing to break it is we've got to take authority over it. We've got to break it. We've got to bind it. We've got to cast it out. We don't need to put up with it. Jesus walked in authority, and, and he released authority in our lives, and we have authority over the religious spirit. The third thing is we need to release the waters of the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is like God's washing machine. You get in the water and it just starts washing you free from things. We need to just sometimes get in the Word of God and just start finding out who we are and say, God, speak to me. Release the waters of the Word of God. There's things that you face in your life that the only way you're going to come out is by the revelation of the Word of God. God can lift one verse out of here and shake you forever. So we break religious spirits by getting in the Word of God. Ephesians 5 says, Husbands, love your wife, and Christ loved the church, that he might sanctify it, cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. They're talking about the church. That he might present himself a glorious church, no, having no spot or wrinkle. Now, if you study that out, spots, wrinkles, and blemishes deal with false teachers and false prophets. He said, you get the washing of the water of the Word going, and it starts washing out the false teaching. It starts washing out the false prophets. And, and so we lose the water of the Word in our lives. Fourthly, we teach, learn, and meditate. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time, but James 3 talks about the office of a teacher and says, what well, a little member of the tongue is, it can turn the whole body. When we begin to teach right, we believe right. One of the things that breaks the religious spirit is we get the right teaching in our lives and we begin to learn. Now, I, I love uh, the scripture here. It says this. It says that Paul is talking uh, to Timothy here. He says, command and teach these things. I like that verbiage. Command and teach. In other words, he said, tell people you must do this and then teach them how to do it. He says, command and teach these things. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example of believers in speech. Of course, we know he's dealing with the personal life with Timothy there because he was a young man. In conduct, and love, faith, doctrine, purity. Till I come, listen to this, till I come, give attention to reading. Paul said, I have a word for you, Timothy. Read your Bible. How'd you like it? If someone said, I have a prophetic word for you. Oh, yeah. Oh. The Lord said, read your Bible. It's one of the things in revival, I mean, there's times in the glory of God that the glory of God's so thick you can't do what I'm doing right now. You can't preach and teach. But many, many times it's the, the marriage of the Word of God and the Spirit of God that performs the rail system, that the power of God can flow in our lives. And Paul was saying to Timothy, he said, look, uh, Timothy, uh, to read the Word of God, exhortation, doctrine, until I come give attention, give time to reading just general reading your Bible, exhortation, building yourselves up, and the doctrine into the deep foundational subjects of God. He said, do not neglect the gifts in you given by prophecy, laying on of hands. And then verse 15, he said, meditate on these things. Ponder these things. Get a well on the inside. Joshua said, I'm going to fix myself in the Word of God. God said to Joshua, meditate in the Word day and night, and you're going to make your own pathway prosperous as you meditate in the Word and build a root system of understanding. You know what the Word of God says. See, the religious spirit comes to block the power of the Word of God. And then the fifth thing. You know, the Lord told me one time, I have an e-book. I think it's, it's on one of our websites. I think it's at our Revival Network website, nbrevival.com, I think. But I wrote an e-book called The Prevailing Church. And God gave me things that, that, that He told me churches and cities and ministries and cities need to do to prevail. And one of the things God told me shocked me. He said, there has to be prevailing preaching. I said, I don't know what that is. He said, they need to preach to the city. 
They need to proclaim things into the city. And they need to bam the religious spirits in the city. See, what happens is a, a man or woman of God goes into a territory with a mandate of transformation and they get us to go in that city and say, this is the way, Lord, bam! And then right after that, guess what? There's a bam back at them. What do they got to do? They got to get up next Sunday and again, bam! Get up next Sunday and again, bam! But what happens is sometimes under that continual pressure, they back off from the proclamation. And there's two types of messages we deliver as, as, as speakers that, that, that minister the oracles of God. We minister messages to people that are sitting in front of us, and we minister messages to atmospheres. And you cannot transform a region just teaching people. You'll transform people by teaching people, but you won't transform the atmosphere in a region. You transform an atmosphere in a region by the right word. By the prevailing word of the Lord. You preach things. If you look at the ministry of Jesus, when he'd go into the region, the region would get shaken. He'd either stay or leave depending on the response of the region. Same thing with the Apostle Paul. So, so we've got to proclaim those things. The fifth and the last thing here. The break of religious spirit. Remember, religious spirit is a revival killer. The fifth thing is a, is a word we don't like, repentance. Repentance means basically to live, think, and move differently. That you, you're literally turning in a complete different direction. I believe when we see the writings of Paul in the book of Romans said to renew your mind. He, I believe this is a form of repentance to say you're not even going to think that way anymore. You're going to get the word of God so strong in you that the word of God, when you want to get angry, the word of God says, I'm not going to get angry. You're going to get the word of God so strong in you that when you don't want to walk in love, the word of God's going to say, I'm going to walk in love. And I believe that repentance is key. This is what we've got to do. I, I like to tell people, pray a radical Psalm 51 prayer. That's the prayer David prayed after Bathsheba. He said, oh God created me a clean heart. He didn't say, oh God created her and created him and created you a clean heart. He said, oh God created me a clean heart. I believe you've got to pray that radical Psalm 51 prayer. We all want a move of God in our lives and there's no room for a religious spirit. What do we need to do? We need to pray a radical Psalm 51 prayer. One of the most toxic things we can do is go around and point at everyone and go, hey, she's got a religious spirit. He's got a religious spirit. We're not fighting with people. We're recognizing operations of Satan that come to defeat the work of the kingdom. And we're coming out from those operations. And that begins with us. As for me and my house, those under my authority. See, you are only judged on what you're in authority over. You have people that are trying to bring correction to everybody else. They need to start with themselves. That's why it says that, that judgment begins in the house of the Lord. Wow. Well, if this church in this city would obey God in this church in this city, da, da, well, if your house would obey God. First of all, you going around and telling everything that's wrong in your city is just fueling the toxic atmosphere in your city. Why don't you just start a prayer meeting in your house, start praying for those people that you think are so toxic and so wrong. Start believing God. You can't stay offended with people that you're praying for. Just start praying for those people. Start contending for the move of God in their life. Start contending for their deliverance. But see, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. We've got to begin to come before the Lord and say, God, if there's any religion in me, strip it out, Lord. Because it will block you from going where you want to go. Amen? We're going to pray in just a minute. If you're watching this, I want to give you a chance to pray with us. Jason, do you want to get... No? All right. Let, let's just pray. Can the worship team come? Just going to pray. Father, we just love you right now. We thank you, Jesus, that you came to set us free, Lord. It was for freedom that you came, Father. And we thank you for freedom. We thank you for freedom. Lord, just just mix things up. I just I just see this big mix, mixer, this big electric mixer like you would put in, in cake batter. And, and the Lord just mixing things up. And I hear the Lord say, in this time and in this hour, I'm just mixing things up. Things, I'm putting the ingredients together. And some of these ingredients will be things you didn't think would go in this recipe. But it is my recipe, says the Lord. And as you just trust me, I'm mixing these things up. But you know what happens when you're making a cake? If that batter's too thick, if there's not oil in that batter, there's lumps in that cake. And a lot of us are lumpy. We've got a little bit of the right spice, but we're lumpy. And we need more oil. It's easy to point at a church and say, well, they've got a religious spirit. You know, some people think if you don't just lay on your back and prophesy for four hours, you have a religious spirit. 
Well, if you think that's the only way God moves, you have a religious spirit. God moves in different ways. He moves through teaching. He moves through laying on hands. He moves through prophecy. He moves through worship. He moves through all different ways. But some, sometimes we just have lumps and we need more oil. So tonight we're just going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to search our hearts. We're going to pray radical Psalm 51 prayer. I want to I want to challenge you. I want you in this room and those on television to think about something that would be offensive to you. I don't know what that would be. It might be a type of preaching. It might be a type of strange, unusual thing happening. You know, it's amazing we can think that we're so free and then something odd happens. I was watching old footage of the great tin preacher A. Allen. He's preaching and oil starts coming out of his hands. And I don't know what the people in the tent thought, but it looked like maybe they didn't believe it because he grabbed his Bible and started putting it on his Bible and holding up the camera. It's on YouTube. You can find it. You know, there would probably be a time in many of our lives there's something like that happened and we never saw it happen to be offensive to us. I would dare say, you know, we all read, we, you read these stories, like you read Jesus saying to them, oh, you hypocrites, and we all cheer that on. But what if that was at your church on Sunday morning? What if Jesus was preaching at your church and you and I said, Jesus, you know, I put a chicken in the oven and you preach a four-hour message and Jesus pointed his finger and said, oh, you hypocrite. And you start crying and say, well, I thought you were nice, Jesus, like the painting on the wall. See, it's easy to read a story and say, oh, yeah, get him, Jesus. But if Jesus was doing that in your church on Sunday morning, you wouldn't be saying, oh, get him. Read about the stories of Smith Wigglesworth and punching people in the stomach with cancer. You say, oh, that's such a cool story. But what if you were in the prayer line and the person next to you gets punched in the stomach and falls on the floor. I mean, I've seen people say, well, when he laid his hands on me, he put too much pressure. You know, Smith would hit you. I believe that we have to get to the place and understand this. God gives us the word to, to put boundaries on us. I mean, we know there's certain things that are not scriptural, certain things that are not of God. But many times the religious spirit will just keep us in a certain spot. I want to challenge you. What if God invited you to the unknown? Remember the story of an old revivalist that was preaching it. They said, those that were in the meeting, that one night as they were preaching, they walked to the end of the stage and didn't realize they were then and just kept walking out in the air and walked back. That would be upsetting if you never saw anything like that before. But let us remember Jesus walked through a wall after he was resurrected. Glory has dominion over all substance. We read about people getting translated. Well, some preacher comes and goes, you know, I was doing a four-hour drive the other day, and in 20 minutes I got there. Oh, I don't believe that. But let's, let's say, Lord, anything that's in me that's limiting the potential of your kingdom. Again, I'm not saying, we know that God forbids certain things. We're not supposed to go to the horoscopes, the psychics, the witches. We know that. That's demonic. We don't run any part of that. But I just want to say to you, there might be experiences in God that we don't understand, that we've never seen it in safe, normal Christianity. I remember the first time I was in a meeting and saw someone get up out of a wheelchair. I never saw that before. I remember in Buffalo, New York, the Lord took me up into the heavenlies. The first vision I ever had like that. And that was on a, I think it was on a Saturday, it was on a Friday or Saturday. And Sunday I preached, Sunday night in Buffalo, and God knocked every person in the floor. I was the only one not in the floor. And I watched, the fear of the Lord came on me. I remember being in Crystal River, Florida, and a young man named Dwayne. In fact, Dwayne called me a couple years ago, backslid, and just would listen to me talk and wept because he still remembers that encounter. Now, when I tell you what I'm getting ready to tell you, you're not going to believe it, and I wouldn't believe it, but I was there and saw it. Dwayne fell under the power in Crystal River, and I saw something moving under his shirt. I could see something like a knot going up and down, up and down, up and down. Well, I had seen one time we were praying for a lady with devils. And I had my hand in her stomach, and I felt something in her stomach pushing back at me. 
Now, if you don't believe in spiritual warfare, that will cause you to change your thinking. Another guy, one time I was praying for him, and his pupils changed to snake eyes. I could tell you more, but it's PG-13. But I remember Dwayne in Crystal River fell into the power, and I saw something moving under his shirt. And I looked at that, and the only time I ever saw something like that was a demon. I was getting ready to take authority over it, and the Lord said, that's me. I said, well, Lord, you have to help me with this, because I, I, I was scared. I never saw that before. He said, what is that? And God said, it's my hand in him, moving up and down, forming the call on his life. I had a girl one time that came to one of the churches I planted, and she had dabbled in the occult, and things would show up in her house and turn the pictures upside down. Something would grab her. Now, you would believe this, and I wouldn't either, but I saw it. Something would grab her in the meetings and try to lift her up off the floor. And you could watch it start trying to lift her. We'd have to take authority over it. The spirit realm has strange things both on both sides. Now, the devil can't do anything better than what God can do. So the devil can pick people up. God, how did Jesus leave out of here? He flew up through the air. Amen. So I want you to think tonight any limits you put on God. You know, I, I've sat with people, this has not happened to me, but I've sat with people who've been into heaven and they've told me they've visited the rooms in heaven where their kidneys and lungs and livers and hearts and they had a revelation that their faith could pull those things down. Well, if you've never been in those rooms, that just sounds like hogwash to you, but it's real. It's reality. I was preaching in New Zealand, this long room, and this section over back here. I wasn't even, uh, it wasn't any extra level of anointing or anything. It's just about like right now. And this group started laughing. I, I'm like, Lord, what is this? I look, and I saw this angel. This angel had something that looked like a bottle of oil, and, and the angel just pouring it on their heads. I said, oh my gosh, there's an angel right there pouring it. Well, maybe five years ago, that might have freaked me out. But see, I said, Lord, I want whatever you have. You, however you want to speak to me, however you want to lead me. Again, we don't want anything the devil has. But let's pray a radical Psalm 51 prayer. If we think a meaning has to look a certain way and that's the only way God can do it, let's let God challenge our heart. If we believe God can only heal us one way and that's the only way God can do it, let's let God challenge our heart. If we believe God can only speak to us one way, let's let God just say, Lord, I just want what you want. So, Father, right now we come before you and we just worship you, Lord. Lord, just search our hearts right now. If we have partnered in any way, shape, or form of the religious spirit, we repent, Lord. Help us to move in a whole other direction. I want you to just take about two minutes and just sincerely beseech the Lord to just shred any religion out of us. Let's just go ahead and just... It's just about two minutes and we're done.
so beautiful and you know we started out tonight with that I may know him and so father we just thank you tonight that you have been revealing Jesus to us that we may know him and Lord we thank you for the washing of the water of the word we thank you for your healing we thank you for the oil the healing balm of Gilead the oil of healing that you anoint our head tonight with fresh oil we thank you, Lord, that our cup runs over. Hallelujah. We thank you that every heart was touched tonight. We thank you that every person was affected by the Spirit of the living God. We thank you so much, Jesus. We honor you tonight. We honor your presence. We thank you for who you are, Jesus. We honor you and worship you. Hallelujah. Let's just give him one more little shout of praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Isn't it worth the time? It's worth the drive. It's worth being here. You're never disappointed when you're at the outpouring in Kodak, Tennessee. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to uh, do a couple things tonight. We want you to give you the opportunity to give, and we're just going to put up some baskets out back there as you go out. You can give. You can make your checks payable to Ryan Lestrange Ministries or RLM, and uh, we be sure that he gets so blessed tonight. Amen. Because, you know, when you get sowed into with spiritual things, then we want to give natural things back in to those who sow into us spiritually. And you were fed so well tonight. Hallelujah. Like every time he's here, you're fed so well. So we want to be sure that we give. And I think they're maybe passing some baskets around. And then we'll put the baskets out there. Also, remind me of the name. Limitless and the name of the group. New Sound. Yeah, I was afraid I'd get it wrong. New Sound Worship and the Limitless CD is out there. I've been jamming for a few weeks now because uh, I pre-ordered mine. And so you want to be sure and get that CD, $10, $10, amen. And then Mr. Robbie Cummings, he has two CDs, two CDs. How much are your CDs? They're $10 also. So uh, awesome. I didn't even know he sang. He was here last time. Uh, one time he played some 
instruments and thank you for being here that was so awesome and thank you guys of course always so anyway we bless you tonight be sure and stop and get your cds and we'll see you next time december the 15th seven o'clock right here at kodak tennessee amen god bless you dismissed